Hey guys, welcome to the Hacked Existence tutorial on soft modding the slim PlayStation 2. So before we jump in, we need to check for compatibility. So visually, if your slim has this reflective strip here, you are good to go and should keep watching. If your slim has this whole reflective panel, basically what that means is that you have a model number of 90,000. So if you have 90,000, you need to look at the date code down here. Mine is 9D. The number basically represents the year, so this is 2009, and the letter represents the quarter that it was manufactured in. So this one was manufactured in the fourth quarter of 2009. So something to note is that date codes of 0123 are 2010, 11, 12, 13. So they are higher date codes than my 9D. So basically to be compatible with what we're about to do, you need a date code of 8B, which is second quarter 2008 or below if you were manufactured before that then this will work. If your date code is exactly 8C, the third quarter of 2008, this may or may not work. They made the change somewhere during that quarter, so some of them are gonna work and some of them won't. You'll just have to try and see. If your slim was manufactured during or after the fourth quarter of 2008, this is not gonna work. And from my research, the only method you have to modify this is to go and get a mod chip and solder it on. All right, so assuming you have a compatible model slim PS2, the next thing to understand is what we're trying to achieve. So basically we need to install FMCB free memory card boot onto a memory card and then plug it into the PlayStation and have it boot from that. So before we go any further, you kind of need to understand that there's a bunch of different ways of installing FMCB to a memory card using the slim. So there's specific games that are known to have vulnerabilities that can be exploited. So you can burn a CD, uh, do a swap trick and use that to get FMCB installed. You can always buy a mod chip and solder it on and use that method. You could also find a swap magic disk and use that. There's methods for that. But the method that I'm going to use is to use an already modded PS2. Um, and so the reason I'm going this route is because I borrowed this fat PS2 from a friend of mine. I paid $15 for this network adapter and just used a hard drive I had sitting around in my lab and was able to install free memory card boot onto the memory card. I did a whole video. Uh, just on those steps. And basically now to soft mod our Slim PS2, I'm just going to take my free McBoot memory card and plug it into the Slim PS2 and now it's soft modded. So you can use either of these systems now to generate more memory cards. As long as we do the multi-install, you can plug those memory cards into any PS2 that's compatible and it'll be soft modded. So for example, here's another compatible Slim. Here's another FMCB memory card, and now I've modded two Slim PS2s during this video. So the next thing we'll do is take a look at how to set up a USB hard drive, dump our game library onto here, and then have our Slim PS2 play those games right off the hard drive. All right, so now I've got my USB hard drive plugged into my Linux box here, um, and I've got it all pulled up. So you can see it ships with an XFAT partition, so I'm just gonna start by deleting that and creating a new partition. Um, and I'm going to make it a FAT32 partition, take up the whole disk. Okay, so now that we have it formatted for FAT32, um, at this point we could just start putting games onto it, but what I'm going to do is plug it into the PS2 and boot it up. Uh, I'm going to launch OPL so that OPL creates the file system hierarchy so that we don't have to do that manually. Uh, so let's give that a shot. Alright, so I've got the hard drive plugged into the PS2 and now I'll just power it on. And I'm going to launch OPL. Now here I'm going to go into the settings and I'm going to turn the USB device start mode to auto. Oop, not that one. And hit OK. And then I'll go into display settings and enable cover art. And hit OK. And then I'm going to save the changes. and I'll hit circle to go to games list and we can see now it says USB games so at this point it should have created our file system hierarchy on the hard drive so now I'm gonna pull the hard drive out of the PlayStation and stick it in a Windows box so I'll hit start to go to the menu and I'll just do a power off here okay so now I've got my USB hard drive plugged into this Windows machine here and we'll just pull it up and we can see that OPL has created this file system hierarchy in here um, so because it's FAT32, you run into a problem with files larger than 4 gigabytes. Uh, FAT32 just can't handle them. So if your ISO is smaller than 4 gigabytes, like this Dance Dance Revolution Extreme 2 rip I just did, um, you can basically just copy your ISO 
and paste it right into the DVD folder on your USB drive. Okay, so now OPL will see that game on our USB hard drive and we'll be able to play it. But for files that are larger than 4 gigs, basically we need to get a program called USB Util. Um, and I'm going to get the version 2.0, even though there's a 2.2, uh, I couldn't find a copy of it in English. So I'm just going to go ahead with the 2.0 in English. And I'll extract that. Alright, now I'll launch USB Util, hit close. Um, so here I'll go to File, Create Game from ISO and I'll go up on my desktop where I have Grand Theft Auto and you could select multiple ones if you wanted to do it all at once. Um, but basically I'm gonna have USB Util dump that right into the root of the USB hard drive. So what USB Util is doing is taking this file that's larger than four gigs and splitting into multiple one gig files, um, dumping them all right into the root of the hard drive and then it creates a file in the root of the hard drive that the PlayStation 2 will be able to use to read all the disks in there. Okay, and now we can see that Grand Theft Auto San Andreas has been stuck on our USB drive. So now the last thing I'm going to do is go get the artwork for the two games that we just stuck on the hard drive. To do that I'm going to use OPL Manager, so I did the whole setup and install of this in the fat PlayStation 2 video. Uh, so if you haven't set up an OPL folder like this yet, go watch that video. But basically, I'm just going to paste those two ISOs right into the OPL folder. And then I'll launch OPL Manager. And we'll rename our two ISOs. And then I'll go to Batch Actions and Art Download. And just hit Start. Alright, now OPL Manager has pulled down all the artwork for our games, so I'll open the OPL folder and go into Art, and there's the artwork we just downloaded, so I will cut this, and go to our USB hard drive, and into the Art folder there, paste it, and now we're good to go. So I'm going to pop the hard drive out of this Windows machine, plug it back into my PS2, and we'll give it a try. Alright, so now I've got my hard drive plugged into the PS2, so I'm just going to power it on, and we'll launch OPL. And now if we hit circle to go to our games list, you can see that not only are the games that we just put on our USB hard drive here, but the art is there with them. So hopefully at this point you have a modded PlayStation Slim that's capable of taking your game library from the discs, backing them up as ISOs onto the hard drive, and then playing them in your PlayStation 2. So as always, stay tuned and thanks for watching.